That was much better. Much better indeed. The Dallas Mavericks bounce back with a victory at home, 110-102 to over the visiting Toronto Raptors. Now, why is this important? Well, for starters, Dallas hasn't been very good at home this year. And when you look at how they've shot the ball, how they've you know kept it, protected the ball, you know, no turnovers and all that, they've been far better, oddly, on the road this year than they have been at home in the AAC. So, it's good that A, they got that going again, and B, they put the last week behind them because those two losses to the Knicks aren't going to look any prettier as the season goes on, but that's all right because, hey, if you can find a way to win 12 of your first 20 games, statistics show you're more likely to be a playoff team, obviously. I know that sounds like common sense, but your likelihood goes up significantly. So for Dallas, in this case, to get another win, you got to be able to protect home court. You got to take advantage of these these games you really need to, which is why those Knicks games, both of them hurt. But that's all right, because Dallas got back on track in this game. Now, I will have a lot more to tell you guys about the my experience tonight. I covered the Mavericks game here for Dallas Sports Fanatic tonight. I was an, a, a credentialed media member the entire night. That means I got Rick Carlisle's pregame press conference, locker room access in the pregame. Uh, did not get to talk to Mark Cuban like I thought I would. Uh, didn't get to be part of his media scrum. I don't know if he really does that in the same way he used to do it, but that's all right. Uh, I still got DeLon Wright pregame. That's on the channel now. I also got, after the game, Rick Carlisle, his press conference, and I was in the second row for that. And then in the post game, I got a lot of locker room access too. So I got video from KP and Luca post game. Uh, I wanted to get Seth Curry, but he ended up not talking with the media like I expected him to. So that kind of was a shame because obviously I'm a huge Seth Curry fan. But all the same, it was it was really good to get back into that whole experience. I will talk about that more tomorrow. I want to focus for this video on the game itself. So Dallas started off still a little bit sluggish as as they have been. Uh, they were down 10 to three right off the bat. But I I contended going into this game. And I, I really was talking about this if you followed me on Twitter, which you should. I mean, Twitter handle right down there, Kirby Create underscore DDP. I live tweet a lot of Maverick games and, you know, obviously have all my other works and everything shared through that as well. But as I pointed out on Twitter, this was the end of a five-game road trip for the Raptors. So you had a chance to catch them fatigued. And for the most part, I think that's what ended up happening. Now, the first half, Dallas took like an 11-point lead in the first quarter, and by the end of the second quarter, had completely given it away and then some. Dallas trailed by, I think, nine off the top of my head. I believe it was like nine at half. And it just was it, it was just a messy second quarter. The bench unit still does not look like they know what to do when Luka's off the floor, when you have that second unit in and the other team throws a zone at them. It just completely discombobulates everything. Uh, Dallas just not finding a rhythm. It felt like Luka could get to the rim kind of at will. His outside shot is still not looking great. He struggled to shoot the ball in this game. The big thing is Luka made only five shots on the night, but what got him 26 points is the fact that he got to the line. A career high for him, 19 field uh, free throw attempts, makes 15 of them. He started out 6 of 10, so a little sluggish there in the first half, but he made them all in the second half, so that was good. That was huge for Dallas. Another thing that caused the second quarter in the first half really to be so wonky for Dallas, KP struggled shooting the ball. KP, I think, had eight points at half, and that's just not good enough. He got a lot of really good three-point looks, wide, wide open three-point looks, and he just wasn't knocking them down, and you could tell he was a little bit uncomfortable out there. He even went to the line late in the second quarter, and bricked his first free throw, and you kind of saw that frustration in his body language and on his face. But that's all right. Made the second one, and what's more, Dallas finally got got him going in the second half. They made a real point, I felt, of getting him going, and not just, hey, let's get him a wide-open three. No, he's not hitting those right now. Let's try and get him the ball where he wants it. That little move, not it's like the middle of the paint kind of it's like the low block but not the low low block uh catch just turn and shoot over the shoulder catch turn over to his inside shoulder and shoot real simple 
but he makes it real clean. Dallas hit that move two or three times. Uh, he finally knocked down his one three-pointer on the night. He was one of seven from beyond the arc. And they got him going. 20 points, a, a season-high 15 rebounds. Hey, I still remember every one of you who told me I was ridiculous for expecting KP to rebound better. That, oh, it's either blocks or rebounds. I never bought that, and he has been fantastic since the first week of the season in terms of rebounding. So, ha! Now, uh, another interesting fact here. I mentioned Luka's stat line, 26-15-7. and seven. That means that in for the first time in Mavericks history, you have two teammates scoring at least 20 points and grabbing at least 15 rebounds in a single game. Now, let's look at NBA history. It is the first time in NBA history two international players, teammates, scored at least 20 points and at least 15 rebounds. That is some cool information there. So, a little fun fact for you. Dallas got going much better in the second half. I felt like you started to see in the second half especially, even though the Raptors wouldn't go away, credit to them, credit to Van Vliet in particular, he would not let the Raptors go away. They kept cutting it down, cutting it down, cutting it down, got it down to two points in the final two and a half minutes before Dallas finally pulled away. And this this was great. This was a great game for Dallas. A lot of great hustle plays. KP was fantastic defensively. He only got one block, but he altered a lot of other shots as well. Uh, you saw him diving for a loose ball that led to a DeLon Wright. And by the way, great game for DeLon Wright too. Down there, 15 points, four boards, three steals. Six of eight shooting against his former team. DeLon Wright balled out in this game. And that that's when you got DeLon Wright filling the role of the third man for Dallas, it's not bad. Not bad at all. And hey, look at that. Seth Curry. He started again, 33 minutes on the game, 15 points, six boards out of Curry. That is huge. Three of five from three. You know, coming into this game, Curry was only, I think in the last two games total, he had something, he was shooting something in the last two or three games, like eight or nine misses consecutive from three. His three-point percentage was down at 33%. Righted the ship, missed his first couple threes, but then he knocked down three straight and it really helped this offense out in that way in terms of spreading the floor. Dallas shot abysmally from three tonight, like 23% abysmally. The difference is they got they got a lot of points in the paint, they won the rebounding war, and they, they managed to get to the line. Now, Dallas, field goal percentage, 42%, 42%. Balance there. Three-pointers, oh my God. Dallas, 23%, only 9 of 39. Toronto, 41%. And Toronto's comeback, they them not going away, it's because the three ball was there. Free throws, though, Dallas, 27 of 33 for 82%. Toronto, 11 of 15. Free throws were massive in this game. Dallas took care of the ball for the most part, too. 12 turnovers compared to 14. Out-assisted Toronto, 24 to 21. Out-rebounded them by 13 and, and 5. You know, they got 55 rebounds total. That's 13 more than Toronto got with 42, and they got five more offensive rebounds than Toronto at 12 to 7. They blocked four shots compared to two, committed fewer fouls, and no technicals. So Dallas in this game, they were really, really good. The biggest thing, Toronto, man, they've they're a good defensive team. Even without Kawhi, they have been smothering on some stars in this league. They've held James Harden in check. They've held LeBron in check. Uh, you you just have to be very careful with them they will they will smother your star and they did that with Luca man they kept sending the double team on him in any screen situation they were they were picking him up 12 feet away from the three point line like they were forcing the ball out of his hands and Luca was you know making the right play just not saying he was the one getting uh like oh here's a pinpoint pass for an assist no but he was getting the ball moving and letting his team play basically five on or four on three basketball if they sent the attention his way, okay, here, let me let me hit the open man, and now we have the advantage down here. That's why that's part of why Luca's numbers were ho hum again, other than the free throws. He got to the line at will. He was he was doing all kinds of Euro stepping, uh, skip to my loo, all that to to get to the line, and it really showed. It, it was a huge game for him in that regard. Uh, the big thing for me though in this, I talked about KP's defense earlier. I would be remiss. If I did not mention Maxi Kleba as well, Maxi balled out in this game. 
I don't have him listed on here, but Maxi also gave you, let me see. Maxi in this game also gave you 10 points, six boards, two assists, four of 10 shooting. So not a huge day in that regard. Two of eight from three and a block. Not a huge day in that regard, but he played a lot of great defense on Pascal Siakam. And Siakam in 41 minutes, 15 points, three rebounds, seven assists, six of 24 shooting, two of 10 from three, five turnovers. Maxi balled out, and he, he was great defensively for Dallas here. Uh, really good to see him shine. It's getting harder and harder to understand at this point why he doesn't take more of Dwight Powell's minutes. Powell has just not been great for Dallas this game uh, this year. 14 minutes for him, four points, two boards, one of one shooting the ball, two free throws. I mean, that that's, that's so ho-hum, it's almost not even worth mentioning other than saying, Maxi, yeah, 38 minutes to 14, I get it. And I'm like contending that Dwight should not get as many minutes as Maxi. Not necessarily in the scope of this game. I'm talking big picture. I'm talking other games as well because we've seen Dwight getting a lot of minutes and getting just abused abused by opposing big men and Maxi Maxi's a better defender like not just a better rim protector he's a better defender at this point uh it, it's you know I, I was happy to see Justin Jackson get some looks early on he only got five minutes they were all very early in the first I think actually the start of the second quarter during that disaster streak for Dallas but uh, Jackson, one of four shooting. Again, a nice a nice floater, but he missed a couple threes, including one that was a drawn-up play for him in the corner. You got to hit that, man. You got to hit that shot if you want to get more minutes. That's another guy that I was hoping to talk to but didn't get a chance to tonight. Um, oh, man. The, uh, the low spot of the night for me is Tim Hardaway Jr. He... I, I say this jokingly every time uh, every time Tim Hardaway Jr. bricks another shot, I can't help but blame any just a little bit more. I feel like he is at least a little bit responsible for trying to convince me that Tim Hardaway Jr. was going to be hell. He went as far as to say sixth man of the year uh, contention, bro. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head what his field goal percentage is, but it feels like it's about twelve and a half percent. It's bad, and he still gets a lot of minutes. And I, I've heard uh, you know Bobby Carella talk about like, well, hey, sometimes you just need a guy who can go out there and get his shots. And you know he might not be hitting at a, a rate that you want right now, but you need a guy who's out there and will hunt for shots and to kind of keep this second unit going. Here's the thing, man. Hunting for a shot, I, that, yeah, great. A shooter mentality, a true shooter mentality is to keep shooting. Doesn't matter if you've made 100 in a row or missed 100 in a row. You want to just put it, put it out of your mind and just focus on the next shot. That's great, except for when you're missing every single shot and you haven't learned your lesson. When you're going out there and you're just brick, 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 then it gets really painful, painful to watch. 2 of 11 shooting for him, 0 of 3. Four points, one rebound, three assists. You saw him routinely in this game, uh, cursing, stomping his feet after he would miss a three. Just a rough, rough outing for him. Uh, he seemed like he was still venting a little bit silently to himself in the locker room. Again, he did not talk with the media, but you heard him talking with Dorian Finney-Smith a little bit, or at least the people there did. Um, I don't know, man. He he had a rough he had a rough go, and he's not had a good season. He's not. He's not doing what we need because we either need him to help, we either need him to contribute to this bench, or we at the very least need him to play well enough that we have an opportunity to move him in a trade trade deadline deal. And uh, he's not playing up to snuff for that. Brunson, another guy, not a whole lot of minutes. Nine minutes on the game, four points, two of two though, one and one, and a steal as well. Brunson... He didn't get a lot of minutes, but I felt I noticed him when he was out there. It felt like he was making positive impacts and positive plays. So, uh, no Berea. I asked for those. Someone asked me when I posted uh, a community post on this on the channel earlier. Somebody asked me to ask specifically about JJ Berea. 
Uh, we that question came up actually before I got a chance to ask it in Rick Carlisle's pregame presser, and he basically said Berea is healthy, Berea is ready. We've talked with him about being ready, and when when his number's called, he'll be ready. It's basically a really fancy, wordy way of saying coach's decision as to why he's not played more. I don't know. He got the one game. He showed out, looked really strong in it, and we've not gone to him since. I don't know why that is. Uh, additionally, this is a note as well. This was after the game, KP walking off the court. Uh, apparently on TV, you guys saw it as well. A woman detained basically for, it was hard to tell on TV what was happening. Obviously I haven't seen, seen it on TV. I only saw it as we were walking by heading towards the locker room area and actually really heading past that to the press conference area for Rick. Uh, she actually walked right past us. She, she wasn't cuffed, but her arms were behind her back and she was being let out by security. And I mean, she passed right by me and i i didn't even know what was going on i just heard her hollering and i saw her arms behind her back and it was just like what's that about and then we got the story filled in and uh it came up someone asked kp about it afterwards he said that basically and you'll have the audio from it as well um tomorrow that's the other thing, too, is I got audio post game from Luca and KP. The Rick Carlisle one's probably ready to push out immediately. I'm going to review it, though, just to be sure, because obviously he's press conference at a mic. Much easier. Uh, Luca and KP, the audio sounds all right on the KP one. Uh, Luca, I really got to see, man. Luca, so, so quiet talking. But in KP's thing, talking about the incident in question, he basically said she came up to him with a basketball and she was like really animated like kind of shoving it toward him wanting him to sign it or something and he said it was a weird kind of thing but at the same time he was just like oh okay you know like he, he clearly was weirded out by it but he basically said like i just thought the best thing to do would just be to sign the basketball so i was reaching for the ball and something with uh kind of how she was bodying him up or crowding him or something like that Security basically was just like, okay, I don't know what's happening here, but I'm getting you away from the player. KP uh, said after the game, you know, I hope she's all right. I I, will, I wanted to sign the ball. That seemed like the easiest thing to do to kind of make whatever was going on end. And he hopes she's all right. That's basically what he said. So uh, you'll get more of that audio and him talking about him kind of continuing to work his way back into form what he felt like he found rhythm with and what was working for him in this game. And KP, man, I'll, I'll give him this. And you probably know it from the clip that was shared last week. He is an open book when it comes to being honest and very um, analytical about himself. He, he is very honest and open and very self-aware. Other guys are incredibly guarded and you're not going to get nearly as in-depth or satisfying of an answer. And, I mean, that's somewhat foreshadowing there, I guess. But it is what it is. So, um, the Mavericks, the important thing is, I'm not going to rattle too much longer about this game rattle on. The Mavericks get a 110-102 victory over the Toronto Raptors. A uh, big win for them to get back to establishing a little bit of a home court advantage. And... A lot of good happened in this game. A lot of good happened. Still some things to work on. Still some things that they're going to have to sort out. They're going to have to figure out that three-point shooting, obviously. But you know what? I feel pretty good knowing that even on a night when Luka doesn't shoot the ball well in terms of field goals, even when uh, Dallas can't shoot or make a three, I should say, to save their lives as a team, they can still beat a really quality opponent if they get to the line and protect the ball and play with energy. That's the best thing you can hope for in that case. So that's going to do it for my time. I've been DDP. This is the Dallas Prospect. Don't forget to like the video. Uh, support us on Patreon if you like what we're doing. And if you want to see more of our content in the future, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Hit that!